that was what I was testifying in uh, Iraq against Saddam Hussein. Right. And he was there in the room? Uh, Saddam? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. tell me about that. Didn't he start yelling at you? Or? Uh, no, well, uh, he got very emotional. Um, see, they let in the trial, uh, in addition to the judges and the lawyers of each side, they allowed the defendants to ask questions. Uh -huh. So he got up and uh, he started out kind of reasonable enough and then the, the longer he talked, the more off the wall he got. But he was attacking my credibility and you know, who was I, where would I come from? Was I, you know, uh, uh, how do we know that he knows what he's talking about? Yakety yak yak. And uh, he made the remark, he said, you know, Iraq is full of mass graves. I could listen to all this on simultaneous <laughs> translation. Mm -hmm. And Iraq is full of mass graves. How do we, many of them are, you know, very ancient. Uh, you know, how do we know that these aren't Sumer Sumerians who died, you know, four or 5,000 years ago? Uh -huh. And I was just aching to answer because I had, you know, I was going to point out that even though I knew the Sumerians had a very advanced civilization, I did not know that it was so advanced that many of them were wearing, had digital wristwatches, which many of these guys did. And, and furthermore, it would be curious if there were Sumerians why all of the watches were stopped in late August 1988. But I didn't get the end. The judge finally just said, look, your lawyers have already accepted Dr. Snow as a witness. Please sit down. Okay. What about, talk a little bit about Casey, though, because I have to ask you about that since that's such a Chicago case. Well. But, I mean, did you know what that was about when you first arrived? Oh, yes. <clears throat> By the time you got there? Uh, by the time I had gotten there, see, they had brought all of the bones out that spring. Mm -hmm. What was it, 79, wasn't it? Yeah. It had, right before Christmas, I believe, was the, they, they found it. Then they went out and they, you know, found all the other bodies under his house. And Dr. Stein, though, uh, they were brought back and, uh, you know, he examined them all, but they were still largely flesh covered. You know, they were decomposed, or horrible state, most of them. By that, you know, some of them were still unidentified at the time. And was there anything that I could do uh, to maybe get some more identified and uh, get some more information? So I came up, and I was up here for pretty close to a month in Chicago. Um, uh, what I had them do uh, was, you know, chemically remove the flesh mm -hmm. from the bones so I could look at the bones. And of course, with roughly 200 bones and uh, more or less, well, we had 28 victims, I believe. Uh, uh, you know, you're talking about 6,000 bones and another few hundred teeth. Well, uh, I've always figured the unidentified maybe fall into two groups. Uh, one group would be the outer towners, you know, that were just drifting through. And you remember how many runaway sure. kids there were right. in those days, in the late 70s. And some of these families probably to this day don't know that, you know, they may be living in Texas or, you know, anywhere in the country. Mm -hmm. And they know that their son disappeared but they had no idea that it, he could have been a Gacy victim. And so 
of the seven or eight that are unidentified, some of them may fall in that category. And then the other, I think there are probably some families uh, that kids here in Chicago, and they know very well, are suspected. It was, but they just did not want to get, you know, because of the